ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਥੋੜੀ ਚੱਲ ਲਈ ਹੁਣ ਵਿਚਾਰਾ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਰੱਖਣੀ ਹੈ ਨੌਜਵਾਨਾਂ ਲਈ ਸੋ ਮਾਫ ਕਰਨਾ uh one of the things i want you to talk about uh that's been uh, a worrying thing lately is that there's a real secular uh, attempt to turn vasakhi into a cultural event vasakhi used to be about the spring used to be about harvest used to be about new year but guru gobind singh ji maharaj used that day to gather all the sick to create the khalsa but what we're seeing now is a reverse evolution we've gone from spring new year and harvest to the khalsa uh, sirjana and now we're going back to the balle balle to the haripa to the pangra to the jalebiyan and no one's actually talking really about what the khalsa truly meant there was an event in birmingham yesterday by the indian consulate and he invited everyone to celebrate vasakhi and all it said was this is the new year nothing about guru gobind singh maharaj and nothing about his panch pyare what we've seen and there's a real concerted effort and if you actually look at real concerted effort for for subversion how many generations of sikhs have gone past and they don't even know what bandi shor is what's been shoved down their gob is diwali 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 and now we can see the same happening with vasakhi the amount of events i've seen up and down the country even to the extent that the the event by the lord mayor sadiq khan in london was mixing a whole bunch of pangra some of our girls dancing on stage and a little bit about religion and now what i've seen is events that are completely ignoring the religious side and it's all about the culture can you imagine changing the pagan dates that christians believe so it has nothing to do with jesus how much of an insult is that to jesus would muslims allow their eid milah to be nothing about their faith and just about their girls dancing on stage the reason why we allow this to happen is be- because we're quite softly divided on a lot of things and if we actually truly look at what the khalsa was Guru Maharaj when he created the Khalsa it wasn't just about people who would feed the homeless it wasn't about people who would it wasn't about a whole force that would look out for the downtrodden and the poor it was a force that would be free it was Wahiguru's elite forces that would look after themselves and other people this is the element that we're forgetting so if we start forgetting the religious part of Vasakhi in essence we are actually mocking the identity Vasakhi was a personification of our beliefs and if we start ignoring the religious part of Vasakhi then actually we're allowing people to attack it and we as much as we can blame a wider agenda we are also to blame because how many of us stand and say nah Vasakhi is about my guru so if anything what we need to do is start looking at what Vasakhi truly means This is why I feel that we are being largely ignored in the international community. We're quite happy being the most integrated community wherever we are. We're feeding the homeless wherever we are. We're told that we've got the highest literacy rates, we're the highest taxpayers per capita, we give the most to charity. But why is it that in the wake of every Islamic attack it's a guru card or a sect that's attacked? There's 1.6 billion Muslims in this world. There's 20 million sick. It's mathematically impossible to find us, but they do. So we are invisible in the society that we're in. And because we're so well behaved, because we're so compliant, people think they can take the mickey out of us. So what we need to do is use that element of Vasakhi, that element of defiance and start putting it into our children so we're not pushovers. We're not pushovers in the classroom, we're not pushovers in the council, we're not pushovers in parliament, and we're not pushovers in the world. This is why I feel that our DNA, our genetic makeup's being tampered with. We are always looking for a master to please. And that master, it doesn't matter what his identity is, and there's so many examples of it, but I'll just use one. One which is the most recent, Harjeet Singh Sajjan, the defense minister in Canada. achieved amazing things in his life amazing things and what i learned from harjeet singh sajjan's visit to india was two real key critical things the first one was how much hate and contempt the indian establishment have for a sikh even to this day they couldn't believe how did a dastar wala sikh become the defense minister of canada he was being insulted from up and down the country sure some people showed him respect 
But had he been an MPP Gora or a Hindu whose name was Sharma instead of Harjit Singh Sajjan, there would have been the red carpet wherever he was. That's one of the things I saw from Harjit Singh Sajjan's visit. The other thing was a bit more telling about our, our psyche. Many people use their posi position, no matter where they are, to advance their own cause. Many people use their position, their accolades, to advance their own community. How can I bring my people up with me? What I saw with Harjit Singh Sajjan was, which is true for many Sikh, is how do I let go of my community? How do I let go of my values? That guy kicked ass like Rambo all over Afghanistan for, for, Canada, for Canada. But when he went to India and he was asked about the Sikh genocide, he said that the motion that was passed in Ontario was party politics. In Ontario, they said that the 1984 genocide was a genocide. And Harjit Singh Sajjan said that it wasn't a genocide, it was party politics. He also praised, he also praised, he also praised the law and order of India. It's like a Jew going to Germany and saying, I praise the law and order of the Nazis about how they took care of the Jews. There's something going wrong with our psyche. And it's a shame that a lot of these poodles were the star of Kalgiyawala. Because they aren't really true Khalsa. And a Khalsa is the, the highest accolade anybody could have. The highest accolade. And there have been some Khalsa in our lifetime. This talk, what I'm doing now, I will dedicate to somebody who would have been 70 years old this year. He would have been 70, year, 70 years old. He would have been like a celebrity Baba that we see. He would have been going down in air-conditioned cars, big pandals, he would have been worshipped. His name was Santa Janaya Singh Khalsa Pindranwale. We have all seen how people have been lauding Gardas Man for his song Punjab. Wow, look what Gardas Man's done. He's showing all the evils in Punjab. The drugs epidemic, the alcohol epidemic, the female feticide, the biadabi, the fake dairy. We've been lauding Gardas Man. But who does that song blame? Gardas Man asks in that song to Pagat Singh, Pagat Singh, will you give your shahidi if you know what Punjab's going to look like? Ask, ask Pagat Singh this. Would you give your shahidi knowing that Harmandar Sahib was going to get attacked in 1984? Would Bhagat Singh give his shahidi for India if he knew that in Operation Woodrow's 25,000 Sikh would be exterminated physically? Would Bhagat Singh give his shahidi if he knew that in Delhi our people would be, be butchered because they've got a kara, the star or a chunni? Bhagat Singh's own nephew, Bhagat Singh's youngest sister, her son Kuljit Singh Dutt was abducted from his home in the 1980s in Punjab and killed Bhagat Singh's own nephew. If Bhagat Singh was alive today, he would be the most ferocious Khalistani we have ever seen. And that's the truth of the matter. And on that note of Khalistan, yesterday, April 29th, 2017, we celebrated Khalistan Day. On April 29th, 1984, our people, 100,000 of them, just like you, all of you with Ramaz, Dastara, Chunya, they gathered outside Sri Akal Taksab and they declared to the world that we have unequivocal faith in Khalistan. That we want to live as free people. Ask Gardas Man this. In Baba Banda Singh Bahadur's Khalsa Raj, did we have these problems? In Raja Ranjit Singh's times, did we have these problems? Where Sanjane Singh Khalsa Pindrawale was ruling Punjab like a lion, did we have these problems? Without freedom, our people will suffer and suffer and suffer. There's no point in saying that girls are being killed, unborn girls. There's no point in saying that our Punjab is being drowned in alcohol and drugs if we're not gonna blame the person who's doing it. Just like our girls, there's no point in talking about grooming and sexual exploitation if we're not gonna mention the guys who are doing it. The BBC in their documentary Inside Out Talk sport, no matter who it is, they're all mentioning that our girls are being targeted and groomed by Pakistani Muslim guys. If we don't start looking at the people who are cutting us at the knees, whether it is the grooming gangs or whether it is India, then I'm afraid the Sikh Qom will suffer. So if anything we take from Vasaki is that we are the elite forces of Maharaj.
And where we used to deliver justice for, justice for everyone, we are now begging for scraps at the door of whether it's the British establishment or the Indians. So our journey is a long and arduous one, but we have to stand defiant. We have to win small battles, small battles like stopping Vasaki, the culturalization of Vasaki, making sure our kids know what the true Vasaki is about, win these battles. Stop having Gordwari use our money on new wedding halls and get them to invest in Sikhi camps, get them in, to invest in our youth. Win these small battles. Win me medium battles. Try and save our girls on the streets that are getting targeted. Just like the Khalsa was created to crack, to, to feed the poor and the homeless, it also created to crack the Khanda. And this is the element of Sikhi that we also need to bring to life. So like, if there's anything we take from this Vasaki, let's infuse our kids with the spirit of it. Let's infuse our kids, not just with chuti and gulab jamun and candy floss. Let them know, let them know that Mara just for five said. And it wasn't just Guru Gobind Singh Ji. It could even be argued that Vasaki wasn't even anything special. Because who was the first to ask for a said? Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is seen as the most peaceful, the loving, who all he did was sat under a tree and preach peace and love. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is the most ardent and crazy revolutionary the world has ever seen. Guru Gobind Singh Ji was the 10th Nanak. And that Amrit that flowed in 1699 has flowed through countless decades into countless warriors. Let's make our kids into those warriors. Wahi Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Wahi Guru Ji Ki Fateh.